Hello everybody. This is Martin Stransky. I'm a neurologist who lives and works in Prague, but also in the United States. A few months ago, I had the uh, good fortune in being able to put together a short video for you regarding the neurological and maybe even the neurophilosophical and sociological aspects of the current crisis that we're going through as regards the epidemic. And I've had so many questions um, from so many of you that I've decided to put the answers down as well as some new thoughts that have emerged on paper. Uh, so I hope you don't mind me uh, reading a little bit and uh, perhaps you'll find uh, something of what I have to say useful. As stated before, uh, the current epidemic is really a true metaphor of our time. Uh, from the point of view of neurosociology, it shows the exact, exact state that we as a, a species have gotten ourselves into at this point in time in our evolution. Uh, as to the virus itself, it seems to have been created due to the constant encroachment on the ecological boundary between us and animals the intertwining of globalization, media, politicians, and social networks has led to the fact that we're increasingly more and more homogenized. We're basically all looking, thinking, feeling, and acting as one. And our culture has changed to prioritize reward, entitlement, profit, and growth at all costs, uh, which of course has psychological consequences, which in my opinion, have reached unprecedented proportions, especially when one looks at our current reaction to the crisis as compared to other threats that we're facing. Just for comparison, last year, 970,000 people died of HIV. Over a million people died of malaria, including 3,000 children per day, and another 780,000 died of hepatitis, a million and a half people of tuberculosis. All of these are infectious diseases and all are preventable. The current crisis with a million deaths worldwide represents roughly 0.01% of the world's population, but it's shaken the global economy to its knees at an unprecedented rate and scope. It's caused massive social discord. Yes, the numbers will rise. Yes, it's a serious crisis and every life has immense value. But this too shall pass, hopefully very soon. So let's take a look and see what's going on. There's been multiple opinions as to how best to deal with the crisis, and I've been asked many questions, and I'm going to read the most frequent of them to you and then show you where you can find the answers to them. Uh, the first one involves issues regarding record increases of people infected. Uh, then how contagious is the virus? There's lots of questions about wearing masks, yes or no. There's lots of questions on how to test, whether the tests work. How can the testing be improved? Um, and even uh, if I don't get bad symptoms, how bad can it be for me? How dangerous is the virus? What about drugs? Do drugs work? What's going to finally happen to the virus? Uh, do quarantines work? what really works best in getting rid of this virus once and for all. A very important question, uh, what about school children going to school? Should we go to school? Should we send the children home? And also questions about vaccines. I'm not going to uh, bore you with the answers now, but the answers are down on paper. Uh, and most importantly, every answer is lifted from completely verifiable scientific sources of national and multinational organizations. So for the answers to those questions, please go to the link which you should see now on your screen. Um, if for some reason you have difficulty doing that, then go to our magazine, which is at www.pri t-o-m-n-o-s-t dot c-z and just click on the new presence and you'll find them there and you'll also find a whole page of 15 uh, internet sources where you can read more about it. Uh, so I'm going to jump to the final two or three questions because after even though I am a neurologist uh, 
I do think it's doing things to our society and even to the way that we think. And of course, uh, probably every doctor gets asked this, so I get asked, so what do you think will happen? From the perspective of history, the current situation and human psychology, uh, we have to divide things into maybe two or three categories. The first is the politicians and how they're reacting to this. Uh, politicians should realize their role and reassure the public rather than prioritizing their own view over repeatedly unsystematic and chaotic statements that weaken common sense and open up space for further social unrest and economic instability. They should realize that at this stage of development, everyone's priority is to be able to work and to maintain as many undisturbed habits as possible in spite of some risk. The health dynamics must be balanced with the negative effects of mass unemployment, the collapse of families in society, and the documented increases in depression, suicide, anxiety that accompany these, restri these restrictions. This is a very tough time because on the one hand we have a disease, on the other hand we have a lack of clear guidelines, and on the third hand we have an enormous and increasing amount of psychological and psychosocial factors uh, that are quote-unquote secondary, such as anxiety, depression, and a lack of treatment and increase in associated unfortunate events, events such as heart attacks, strokes, and death because of this illness. The media uh, has a big role in all this, and starting with serious papers such as the New York Times, uh, they should refrain from pandering to their audiences via standard vices and devices and using words like destructive epidemics that rage among us. Um, give us less text and give us more objective information. Uh, as to us, we should definitely abandon social networks since they're no good for anybody and for anything anyway. And we should realize that our current state is part of the natural cause of the disease and focus on what works. And what does work? Keeping distance, washing hands often, and wearing masks when you're in close proximity to other people. And this is especially true when we're near or around the elderly and immunocompromised people. Those are the people who are going to get into trouble. Based on the facts, let's look at the restrictions. When more than 98% of those who die are older than 65, and the vast majority of them have other diseases that accelerate this process of a falling sick, ill, and perhaps even dying. And when the virus continues to weaken, there should be a much greater emphasis, in my opinion, on preventing management from the front and focusing on management from the rear. That means focusing management on restricting access to the old and to the sick and freeing up the healthy to work and to act and live normally because of the economic, sociologic, and psychological consequences. How do you see the future? It'll be very important that this crisis, somehow or another, end as soon as possible, because on the one hand, like other viruses, it's nothing new as a virus, but on the other hand, this crisis is something new. And it was created by three unique factors merging for the first time. The first is that in more than 50 years, we've never had true global threats, such as a world war. This is an event that humanity has not experienced. Instead of real threats, we now face artificial threats. This has led and is leading to the emergence of false priorities and a culture of entitlement and expectation. The second is absolute media interconnectedness in a digitalized world. And the third is that despite this interconnectedness, we are paradoxically becoming disconnected one person from each other due to our inability to resist digital thinking and its related addictiveness and convenience. Into this scenario comes an illness which, based on current psychological reactions and feelings, has managed to destabilize and dominate all vital aspects of our daily function such as economy, travel, and work. This is an unprecedented and critical change for mankind, which can lead us into a serious departure from our evolutionary neurological abilities and transform us into an intellectually oppressed herd 
under the control of Big Brother. The evolutionary priority of our brains is based on direct interpersonal communication and on dealing with problems face to face. But direct communication is being replaced by a flood of unverifiable messages and chaotic and sometimes manipulative statements from a variety of so-called experts and leaders. The result is a fall into simplistic black and white reasoning with ensuing frustration and anxiety. Physical separation via restrictions only supports this, especially as regards home office becoming a new phenomenon and children having to leave their peers and stare into a computer from home. What's comfortable may not be good in the long run. Finally, taken from a broader perspective, the question is, why are we paying so much attention to the crisis, which still remains far below the list of preventable deaths as compared to other causes? Understanding the answers to this question will be what will determine our future. I myself am convinced that after this crisis is over, and hopefully it will be soon, it will be discussed in terms of its sociological, psychological, and economic impact on society, rather than on its medical aspects. Good luck to all of us. Thank you.